Ooh, yeah. That skunk reeks. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a fine uh, fall-like day. It's uh, starting to feel like fall, even though today is probably gonna be a little bit warm as the day goes on. The mornings are nice and cool right now. It's wonderful. All right, so first things first, story time. All right, so over here by the messy, messy chicken coop. So last night uh, was Monday night for us. Uh, me, Jason from Sow the Land, and Al of Lumna Acres, we have a podcast. We just sit around, talk shop. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's usually about an hour. So when I got done, uh, chores needed to be done. It's about nine o'clock, uh, pretty close to it. Uh, it's just, just barely dark. Well, I walked out the door, and I don't know if you ever get those weird feelings, but I had this weird feeling. And I said to Meg, right before I stepped out the door, I was like, I, I bet you there's a skunk out here getting the chickens. Well, my thought was, go check the meat birds, because they're at the farthest, you know, away from the house corner. And usually this time of year is when the skunks start coming in, trying to eat your animals. Well. I made it probably to the end of the mobile home, headed the opposite direction, and it finally dawned on me. I could hear chickens in here cackling, and I could hear the duck quacking. Mind you, this duck is really quiet. She's the lone survivor from uh, Jack's flock. Jack raised his own flock of ducks, and then either a fox or a skunk, we're not sure, something got in and murdered all of them, all but one. Well. He just kind of, he was he was so frustrated, he was just like, ah, forget it. And so we stuck that one lone duck in here, and she's just been living in here. Well, you know, I think the trauma of having a critter kill all of her, her flock, she doesn't make noise. Like, she is the quietest duck. Well, as I'm walking that way, it, it dawned on me, it was like, that duck is quacking. Like, a lot. Just quack, quack, quack. As soon as I made the connection, I was like, something's in there getting those chickens. They're already in bed, like it's dark. Uh, usually once it's dark, you don't hear a peep out of this chicken coop. So I came running back over here, checked in the yard, and the duck is running around the compost ring, keeping the compost ring between it and the, the uh, opening to the coop. Well, I came over here, got inside here. As soon as I opened the door, there is a skunk inside the coop, and it's trying to get all the chickens up on the roost. And these chickens are absolutely terrified. So needless to say, I went and got the uh, small pew pew and I ended the skunk. Once I got the skunk, it sprayed. If, uh, if we had smell-o-vision right now, you guys would be amazed how strongly it smells. The poor chickens. So what I'm gonna do right now, funny thing, I, I guess that hasn't really made it, like I haven't made a point to explain the power of a compost pile. If you need to dispose of a small like say if a chicken dies, or like in our case, a skunk. Uh, rather than go dig a hole for it somewhere, I've already got the compost pile, and the compost pile is hot. So I dug to the bottom of the compost pile, dropped that skunk body in there, covered it up, and the stink from the skunk went away, but the stink from the spray is still there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab my scythe. I'm gonna cut a couple wagon loads of grass to put on that pile. The dew is still on the grass, it's still early enough. That grass will get nice and hot. It'll really get that compost pile cooking. And honestly, that skunk in there, probably bones and all, will be gone in about two weeks. Did you see the duck? And then after that, I think I'm gonna go grab some wood chips. I'll bring some wood chips up here and throw some wood chips inside the chicken house just to kind of knock down that stink a little bit. I mean, that's that's the reality of living out in nature. You get critters like that. Um, I believe it was last year, or maybe it was the year before, something woke Meg up at three in the morning. I don't know why she woke up at three in the morning, but she wakes me up and says, I think something's getting the meat birds. And we had went running out there, and sure enough, there was a skunk that had got in with the meat birds and had massacred half of them. It's about this time of year. Fall is when the, uh, the skunks start I guess getting bloodlust. Hi, my Millie. Hi, Millie Cat. Hi, my Millie. <laughs> All right. As it's getting hotter and hotter, I better get to work. So this right here, this is my scythe. This is a European-style scythe. 
Uh, Meg got this for me on my birthday last year. It's got a grass blade on it. The whole thing is super light. I would say maybe like three pounds, like nothing. It's so light. These, where they differ from an American scythe, American scythes are very heavy. They have a stamped blade. They're just kind of heavy and clunky. Um, we have a couple of them and where they do work, they're not nearly as effective as a European scythe. I, I really, really love my scythe. Um, it hasn't really made it into any videos because it's kind of been my little thing of enjoyment. I'll, I like to come out here. If I don't have anything going on, I'll come out after dinner, after it starts cooling down, and I'll, I'll mow an area. It's really interesting being able to mow with a scythe. If I want to, I can get all the way down to maybe half an inch from the dirt. Like it's, it's like honest to goodness mowing. Like in some places I can mow better with a scythe than I can with a lawnmower. Uh, I can definitely get more places with a scythe than I can with a lawnmower. All that said, I'm gonna mow up about enough for a wagon load or two, get a swath going on, see if, uh, see if that's enough grass. That is some good cardio. And you can see where I mowed. If I mow the next swath, it'll put it into what I, it'll make a windrow right where I just was standing. But yeah, I mowed kind of high. And you can see dirt. So I'd say I mowed it probably, I don't know, like an inch from the dirt. Really, really fun. I wouldn't say I'm an expert or anything, but I have a lot of fun using a scythe. It's actually not as strenuous as you would think. It's just kind of like a cardio. All right, I'm gonna start picking all this up, see if I got a wagon load. Oh, howdy, did I? I'm gonna haul this over to the uh, compost ring, see if I need more. Ooh, yeah. That skunk reeks. It's actually, it's not the skunk that reeks, it's what the skunk left in the coop. That's what reeks. All right, chicken. So I know there's gonna be people that are like, hey, you're putting weed seeds in your compost. Yep, yep I am. This compost pile is gonna get up to about 170. Most of those weed seeds will die off. But there's no way of knowing if I'm gonna kill all the weed seeds or not. So I just accept that fact. And if I have to do some weeding, so be it. Weeding's kind of a fact of life, especially out here where it rains all the time. So it's not that big of a deal. Oh, and we're pretty sure that the skunk, it was a baby skunk, by the way, like it was a small skunk. Uh, we're pretty sure it climbed up and over and got in through the top. It could not figure out how to get out of there. I, I looked all over for a hole and there's nothing that a skunk could have got in through. So go figure. I'm happy with that. That will actually heat that pile up a lot better. Got a chicken already in there. Just digging around. Let's go get some wood chips for the inside and hopefully that'll knock down the smell further. What got huge? That got huge. Oh, the kushas? Whoa, that did get huge. Holy mackerel. That one's big too. Buggy, did you see this one? That one's huge too. This Kushaw plant came up voluntarily right here, probably from feeding Kushaws to the chickens. Yeah, this one's big. 
That one is big. We can pick wow. that one. Wow. Can we pick that These one? These are huge. Can we pick that one? They're almost ready. As soon as the plant's done dying, then we'll pick them. Oh. Thing I've learned about growing squash and pumpkins, if, uh, if they think that you're trying to grow them, they won't grow for you. If, uh, if they think they're growing on their own, they're gonna do the best. Words cannot express how stinky it is inside that coop. And not from chicken poop. No, it's from Skunky Boy. Maybe I'm just nose blind, but it smells so much better in here. These are all the brave souls that are like, there's bugs in that. We gotta sort through it now. There you go, chickens. Now you have compost to sort through on the outside and wood chips to pick through on the inside. Oh yeah, that smells way better in here. It'll be a couple days, that skunk will be completely consumed by that compost pile. And now the chicken coop has some, some wood chips in there. Really knocks down the smell a bunch. When I got up this morning, it stunk so bad as soon as I came outside to do chores. It was shocking how bad it stunk out here. It almost smelled worse than it did last night. All right. This looks familiar. More tomatoes. Isn't this what we were doing last, uh, what was that, Thursday? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So this is what we harvested... Uh, over two days. Over two days. So this, this was like... Weekend, yeah. Let me get that? Nope, I got it. Okay. So this is going to be, for sure, just sauce. I might season some of this for ketchup slash barbecue sauce. We'll see. We're nearing the end of our tomatoes. We've discussed ad nauseum now. Just ripping them out and being done. That way we can get the greenhouse turned over ready for fall. I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah, like I'll just, I'll, The best compost is the end of the year compost you make where you take all of your, your garden from summer right. and you pile it all up and make a big compost pile out of it. Those are the best. So we'll see, we might do that. We might let them go just a little bit more. Yeah, we'll see. Um, if we do that, hold on, hold on please. If we do that, then what we'll do is I'll take all the rest of the green tomatoes and I'll make like chili verde or something, some green, kind of green tomato green salsa. salsa. Yeah. We have to do some fried green tomatoes just because we haven't done that this year. Yeah. I'm not sure I have any tomatoes big enough. That yeah, <laughs> that's that's the hard thing. We haven't done real good with the like big tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much done. Yeah, like they the are. only thing really growing is all the cherry size. Right. We did great for getting the tomatoes like right. Yeah. Doing, doing all the Amish paste, they did great. The Cherokee purple, those yeah. did great, yeah. but they just kind of dropped off. Yep. They're not that's really it. producing anymore. Um, if we don't get any, we don't get any. It's fine. And smashing. We are smashing. So if you see people. Looking pitiful. Looking pitiful. Apparently, uh, we picked up a cold last week and it's working its way through the house. Yeah. It's just a cold, kind of stuffy and sore throat. So far, you and me don't seem to have it, but. Yeah, everybody came down with it. Tyler came down with it first, and then two of the others have come down with it. They woke this up morning, this morning so. feeling poorly, so. Yeah. Here we are. I, I guess we're starting this early this season. Yeah. I want to stand right there. No, you can't stand right there. That would be... You want to put the whole thing in. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Want one? No, thanks. Don't Sick of tomatoes. <laughs> I, I, mean, I ate a tomato sandwich every day for like three or four weeks. You did. It was delicious. But I don't really want any more tomatoes right now. <laughs> So something that we failed to mention last time that we do with these skins, and I saw a lot of comments. Yeah. Must be people that are newer that haven't seen. So after we run these skins and seeds through the mill again several times and get all the juice out of them, then we dehydrate them mm -hmm. and we grind them into powder and use them as seasoning. It's like instant flavor. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, I saw a lot of people, they're like, oh, 
you should do you, that. You should do that. And it's like, we've talked we about that for like four years, but you know, there's new people and we didn't specifically say, so yeah. that's the final step. We, uh, this, these tomatoes will get absolutely used like to completely. Like yeah. we will use them completely. There you go. Okay, pull it out. Push more in there. Get a little bit. Yep. It's a little bit faster. This part is a little bit faster on the stove. So you just reduce this by what, like a third? Yeah. Quarter. A half. Half. Depending okay. On how much pulp there is, and just until it's thick, and then I'll can it. I might season it. We'll see. I kind of want barbecue sauce. <laughs> All right, breaking out the dehydrator yep. so we can deal with this stuff. Yep. So I just make a thin layer. Oh, tomato sauce. Hold on. <laughs> Wonder why you stopped all of a sudden. That was awkward feeling. I'm wearing socks. That was. Oh feeling. yeah, you know, like stepping on a puddle of water in socks is one thing, but tomato juice is different. That's a little different. Okay, so I just kind of just spread it out and make it. Thin, thinnish layer, and then I set like pretty much everything for 24 hours just to make sure it's good and dry. Some, you know, you read charts and it's like, oh, dry peaches for 14 hours and apples for 12 hours or whatever. I just go 24 hours. Mainly that way I can just set it and not worry about it until tomorrow. Yep. And then I'll deal with it. Yep. goes all right some time has passed yes. through the miracle of editing <laughs> i would say that is probably reduced by like at least almost half yeah at least half. like a solid third maybe by half that's good thick that looks great uh, i opted to not season this batch i'll do the next batch as like barbecue sauce or ketchup So I was sitting here smelling this tomato sauce all day all, as it was cooking and I happened to look over at the corner over there and there's some pasta in the corner mm. and I was like, ooh, SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs? <laughs> like the smell and then like thinking about pasta, <laughs> it like triggered a memory. I was like, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> I wasn't real big on SpaghettiOs. Really? Yeah, that was I like, love SpaghettiOs. like I'd eat a cup of noodles, but I was I, that was so far below me eating SpaghettiOs. Take it back. It's like Chef Boyardee. Ain't nothing wrong with Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Don't be hating. I love me some Chef Boyardee. <laughs> you immediately went into another batch of tomatoes. So it's all about the tomatoes. It is tomato week. For sure. Oh shoot, I forgot to put the lemon juice in these. Hold on. So usually I do bottled lemon juice. That brings up the acidity because tomatoes are never a guaranteed acidity. So for water bath canning, you add acidity. Um, like I said, usually I do lemon juice, but I'm kind of out of space now. So we're just gonna do citric acid. It's a half teaspoon per quart. So a comment that we get on a very, very, very regular basis is where do you guys put it all? A little bit here. It's literally a everywhere. A little bit there. Yeah. There's some. There's more on the floor There's over here. There's some there that we're, it needs to be stashed. There's some in the back There's here. some like stashed kinda... in the back of the pantry. Yeah. We have some in the laundry. Some in the bathroom. Yeah, some in the bathroom. I've like, like, been known to put stuff under beds. We have jars under beds. We have jars every every single space that we can stash jars is taken up. Uh, something that's interesting too is we have a large family, uh, especially by uh, today's standards. Yeah, I would think that ten kids is nearing the uh, the large family size. We have five, yeah. so we eat a lot of food. And when you prepare your own food, you cook from scratch, you grow your own food, stuff like that it looks different. Sure, we could go to the grocery store every week and buy food, but instead of doing that, we grow our own food. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are things I do go to Yeah, there are like, things. We're not 
Like, I can't oh, yeah. grow coffee. Right. Um, we don't have the space or the equipment to grow wheat for all the bread that we love to consume. Um, that's just a reality. Like, I hope we're pretty upfront about the fact that we don't grow 100% of our food. Uh, I'm not a wheat farmer. No. <laughs> and we do eat a lot of bread. But, on the note of where do we stash it all, like, guys, like, we have a table sitting right here. Like, all the way back Boxes to the wall is jars. Like, we have jars of food stashed everywhere in this house. Nooks I believe, and crannies. I believe we have some odd jars, like, out in, like, the barn or something like it's that. Not a food, no. Not a food, just no. empty jars. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we get it like you see you see us making all of this stuff preserving it it just gets stashed in the nooks and crannies yeah uh, it would be one of those things maybe don't come in here and like roll a bowling ball yeah please don't <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible <laughs> but That's one of the so one of the nice things is it's like yeah it gets kind of cramped in here at the end of summer yeah well then we head into winter and we start consuming right. the stuff that we've put away and as we consume it You'd be surprised how fast you can burn through a lot of your food you've put away. Yeah. You know, this right here, that jar, that's one meal. Right. Uh, a lot of people don't realize they see all those jars and they get overwhelmed and it's like, how do you, why do you need all, all that food? And it's like, it's really not that much, not when you're eating as much as we are. Right. If you think about what you're buying from the grocery store on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, this is the same amount. We just do it all at once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like bulk shopping. Yeah. If you get into, you know, like going to Costco and you buy everything in bulk, well, you have to store that stuff. Well, if it's stuff that you're using, you're going to burn through it pretty quickly. And that's just kind of what we do. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we stock up on the stuff that we grow. Right. We're, uh, we're canning it. We're putting it away, stashing it. Yeah. And honestly, like there are some meals where we'll get out a can of beans and a can of right. you know your sauce and a can of this and you know maybe some fruit for a pie yeah. and then you know like our jar our our sink is full of jars and you know everything food else containers, yeah. Um, yeah it's because we're not buying our food we're just pulling it out of the larder and yeah. eating it yeah so I just wanted to address that I see that comment a lot and it's like well maybe we should talk about it yeah we're like squirrels. Right? We have stuff stashed everywhere. Yeah. And for anybody else who's living in a tiny space that is like, I don't know how we could do this, this is how you do it. You stick it everywhere. Get furniture that's like a little higher <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, get some, you know, like shelving, anywhere you can put shelving and right. you can stash stuff. That works too. Yep. So, yeah. All right. B Y O B. <laughs> Build yes. your own burrito. Okay. Ah, shredded poke. We got some refried beans yep. and some rolls. All right, and then the big skillet's heating up so we can brown them. Yep. All right, let's build some burritos. Yes. This one has been so hyper all day. It's suspicious. Suspicious. It's suspicious. Very suspicious. She is, uh, as you described it, she has been a squirrel tornado. <laughs> all right, we're gonna set the camera down, make a burrito, and then we're gonna eat. I ate that whole burrito. Me too. And I have regret. Yeah. <laughs> do you have regret? I do. That was too much, but it was so good. That was a big burrito. I'm getting sick. Probably. Yeah, probably. All right. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Yep. Full. Honestly, I could probably sit in my chair and go to sleep right now. Yeah, I think I could too. Bye. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.